Hi, welcome to Ranger Country. I'm Peter. And I'm Lawrence. And we're here today after a bit of a break from making videos due to us setting up a new studio. Um, well, here we are, yeah. away from the shop. Don't have any guns to trip over and uh, <laughs> fall over each other. Much less cramped now. We've got new lights, new cameras and new action. So we'll be, uh, we'll be pretty regular now. Today we're, we're here to bring you the Walter Rain. Mm -hmm. The Walter Rain 2. It's the newest iteration of it. We've had the Mark 1 for a good while now, um, but there's, uh, we've had a, had, a, had a bit of a problem with it recently. It was. Yeah, I think it's a bit of a design fault, to be honest. The, um, the adapter from the, from the barrel to the shroud, I believe, was made of something a bit like chocolate. And when you had a moderator on, slightest tap and it would bend this, this device spares weren't available so if you wanted to um to carry on shooting it you couldn't shoot it with the moderator on because clipping was the result and um, they've changed all that though they've got rid of the shroud and threaded the barrel straight with a half 20 so a standard moderator will fit on it whereas the previous thread on the uh, on the shroud adapter it wasn't half 20, so you, you couldn't even take the shroud off and uh, fit a moderator. What do we like about the, the rain? We love that it's nice and short. Um, it's brilliantly light. Um, it's a really capable, accurate little hunting rifle. Now, I, I first saw these when I was on a servicing course for the uh, our remains down at uh, the distributor. And I didn't know what to make of it. I thought it's uh, it feels it feels too light. It, it's very light. It's uh, it's all synthetic. Is it a proper rifle? Is it a proper air rifle, or is it um, yeah a, a bit of a failure? But the accuracy, I think, is absolutely superb, wasn't it? it speaks for itself. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And with with the shortness and the, the lightweight, it's. It lends itself to to hunting. It lends itself to um, restricted um, shooting positions in a in a hide, maybe from a from a vehicle, um, and also to you know for people who probably haven't got a you know awful lot of strength to hold a rifle up, and they're getting a, a little bit older, or something. If you you are able body, you'd be able to walk around all day with it. Absolutely. Now, talking of walking around all day, a nice little um, addition on it is a little hole at the back here. I don't know if the top camera can see that. Now, what that is for is for a quick fit sling stud. So all you do is press the back button, put it in, job done. And there's your sling attachment. And a front one will be on there on the Picatinny. So you can have your sling on, have it over your shoulder, Wander around with it. Job done. Now, this is a Picatinny rail, isn't it? The previous one. The previous one was available either with a, with a pick rail or a dovetail, wasn't it? Yeah, which just gave us another problem of having to order a whole other variant in. Mm. But now... Keep extras in stock. Yeah, that's it. But now, yeah, brilliant. They've just changed it to the Picatinny rail up top. Um, so it's nice and simple. Everyone knows what they're getting. Um, and we're all the same. I think as an extra, I think that the 9 to 11 is available okay. if you really wanted it, but I don't see why you would, to be honest. Just a, you know, sort your mounts and job done. Mm -hmm. Ambidextrous. So your cocking lever is changeable from one side to the other. It's not a massive job, but it's a complicated one because you have to take all the synthetic casing off. A little bit fiddly, there's, there's quite a few screws on it and on the other side to take it off and then to change it round. Probably a gunsmith job, to be honest. I mean, I changed one, it took me probably 20 minutes to, to change it over round. Um, we're trained on the on the, um, the RM8s and several of the makes, so it, it wasn't too hard for us. Um, yeah. I don't know whether you'd want to tackle it yourself. Probably if you, you know, if you use quite hands-on, probably won't be too too much of a job. 
Shall we see what the insides of them look like? Let's, so, let's put that one to take the that. Side. That is the Mark I, and this one is the Mark II. So, first of all, here, I'll look on the top camera here, we've got the new uh, air reservoir. Yep, they're both the same size, they're both 0.2 litres, 200 cc's. Um, but the new style is a steel bottle, so it looks physically smaller, but it is slightly heavier. It's about 300 grams heavier. So The it's, whole rifle. Yeah. Yeah. So it makes this rifle about 2.93 kilos, and obviously the older one was 2.6, 2.7 kilos. So it's a little bit heavier, but one thing that I saw as a possible downside of the first one is I thought it was perhaps too light. I thought when we were down the range, it was a bit wavy in the shoulder, um, and it was a bit it was a bit wayward, perhaps. Hmm. So maybe a little bit extra weight. Fair point. It's not gonna not gonna hurt too much. As we can probably see here, we've got the cocking lever on the right hand side of this one, and then I believe you say you've changed this, I've one, changed over. this one over because I like it. So this is left handed bolt changed over on this one. Like you say, relatively easy job to do. Um, so we can do it here at Range and Country, and that's no problem. Well, we've had this discussion before, haven't we, about left-handed, right-handed shooting with a left-hand bolt. You're not keen. No, I prefer, I'm obviously right-handed. I prefer the bolt on the right-hand side. I'm gonna use my stronger hand to do it, especially if I'm walking around, I'm supporting the rifle in my left hand like so. I'm going to use my right hand while I'm supporting it with the left. But you prefer the opposite, don't you? I do. I do. Mainly probably for range work, when the front of the rifle is supported on a, on a range back, then it's far easier to take your left hand away from underneath the butt to cycle it. But everybody's different, so you've got a choice. Which is the important thing, isn't it? It'd be boring if we were all the same. I absolutely would. So, what lets bull pup rifles down? And I think generally it's the linkage, either on the cocking linkage or on the trigger mechanism. Um, lack of adjustability, lack of feel. I know some will perhaps. Some of the, especially more of the cheaper ones, yeah. um, you can lose a lot of feel, a lot of the crispness in the release of the trigger. You're hanging off the trigger and suddenly it goes and you weren't expecting it. No two stages really, but this is a, this is a proper two stage trigger, isn't it? Yeah, there's feel to it and it's crisp. It's adjustable in here. Again, you have to take the casing off, which is a bit of a downside, but it stops you fiddling, and that's uh, probably a good thing with a lot of people, isn't it? Yeah, it probably is. A little safety catch, a little cross bolt safety catch. Um, that's uh, just above the trigger finger, so for a right handed person. It's going to be nice and easy to take it off with my trigger finger and then I can put it on manually with my other hand. Off, on. These come with a little blanking plug, don't they, for the fill port. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice addition. Yep. Um, the fill port is on the right hand side if you're out in the field and it's chucking it down the rain. You can get rain in there if you haven't got a um, if you haven't got a uh, a blanking plug in there, and you dust and muck. In the RM8, the fill port is vertical underneath, so obviously you're not going to get the rain in it so that you would with it being on the side. Um, so, so that's it on there. You've also got the pressure gauge on the side as well. Um, so it means you don't have to look down the end of the barrel, as obviously a, a lot of people don't like. Um, it's not something you want to be doing. Um, but this is on the side, so you can see it nice and clearly. While you're shooting, you just turn it over, have a look. There you go. Just turn that gun to show, to, so I can see the gauge. Oh, no, I thought they'd squared all the gauges up. They haven't. <laughs> it just so happens that that one is facing. One day, one day, all the makes will have squared up gauges sitting perfectly either vertical or horizontal. Today is not that day. Probably. Hmm. Okay, so the, the cylinder in the, in the new rifle, I think it's the same for the RM8, the 
the R and eight cylinder is, is the same as that yeah. one. Um, I don't know why they changed it to a steel cylinder from an aluminium cylinder. They, they just have. Don't see any drawbacks or um, they they still need testing every every five years ideally. Even though they're a small size, it's uh, most firms that um, that offer cylinder testing will actually be able to do these. Um, we find a lot of the BSA ones, you know, the older BSA cylinders on the um, on like the Super Tens. Probably from, twenty odd years ago, twenty five. Yeah, they can be tested and given a fresh loop of piece of line. So what else do we like about it? We like that it's light. We like that they're accurate. Uh, we like that they're easy to use. Uh, we haven't mentioned on the magazine. No, you've got I've the magazine got, there. I've got one here, just as it happens. So I reckon this is probably, correct me if I'm wrong, one of the cheapest multi-shot magazines that are available. Yeah, I know certainly for a lot of other makes, I won't mention any, no, any names, um, but a lot of other makes, I get people asking, oh, how much is a spare magazine? Uh, and I tell them, and then they hit the floor. Um, whereas these are half the price of some of the others that, out, that are out there, aren't they? Now these are under thirty pounds, aren't they, for a replace? Well, a, a secondary magazine, and I think that's probably on our website. That that probably accounts for one of our biggest sales. Yeah. Spare Walter the rain magazines. Very good value, under thirty quid. So they come with a fill fill probe as well, which is the same as the Walther RM8. Uh, standard brass, straight in there. Again, everything from, fills from the side with the gauge there, so you don't have to fill it in one place, move to another. Everything's all in one place, and you can see exactly how much air you've got as you're filling it. Mm. So let's talk about length. We've got a 500 millimeter on barrel, haven't we? Yep. Now, this one's a little bit shorter, than that one because the barrel finishes the th the the shroud adapter is probably that long inside there so the barrel will probably finish the same as as this one but it has the uh, additional length of the shroud on it um got 500 mil barrel you see it's finished in black on this one silver on this one one of the, the modifications the changes um we need to test it. We, we need to shoot it down the range, don't we? We certainly do, yeah. I was going to say, so the barrel is 500 mil long, um, but the overall length is only 665 mil, according to my little crib sheet here. So that means that it's very, very short. The, the action is very, very short in relation to the, to the length of its barrel. So you've got a nice, long, accurate barrel, but the rifle itself is kept nice and short, and nice and compact. I think you need a moderator on it, though, don't you? Yeah. It's got a bit of a bar to it, especially if you're out hunting. You need to moderate it. Yeah. Yeah. All, all short, short, um, uh, short rifled barrels, um, short barreled rifles will be quite loud, um, yeah. louder than their longer barrel counterparts. Another benefit of having a moderator on, especially with a short rifle, it prevents you from putting your hand over the front of the muzzle just before you take a shot. We do know actually somebody who did that and uh, had a pellet hole through his finger. And he admitted to it as well. That was yeah. the that was the best thing. <laughs> so I think next job, get it out onto the range. Mm -hmm. Let's see what it'll actually do. Yeah, absolutely. Right, brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll see you uh, down on the range.